Now in question number six, we were asked to sketch, first of all, the graphs of y equals 3 over x and the graph of y equals 2x plus 5, to put them on the same graph. Well, first of all, we need to draw our axes, okay, so we'll have our axes. Don't forget to label them, though, um, and put arrows on the ends of the x and the y axes. So first of all then, the graph of y equals 3 over x. You should rec recognize this. This is a reciprocal graph. Um, if we just work in the margin here, let's imagine you've got the graph f of x equals 1 over x, the reciprocal function. This graph, you should know, is essentially a graph shaped like this. goes down there and down like that. Okay, the y-axis and the x-axis are called asymptotes. That's where the graph doesn't cross the axis, it just tends towards them. What we've got here is essentially much the same kind of graph. We've got to look at the graph of 3 over x, and that would be 3 times f of x. That would give 3 times 1 over x, which is, in other words, 3 over x. And when you multiply a function by a number, such as 3, what this does, in effect, is to stretch this graph parallel to the y-axis by scale factor 3. It's going to essentially draw out the graph. It's going to make it look more like this. Okay, pull it out much further. So if we sketch this over here, We've got a graph then that comes essentially down like this and tends towards the x-axis. Okay, and the same over this side, like that. Okay, so that's our graph of y equals 3 over x. And it clearly doesn't cross the x or y axis. So I'll just mark that in as y equals 3 over x. Now for the second graph, y equals 2x plus 5, you should recognize that this is of the form y equals mx plus c. Any equation like that represents a straight line. A straight line with a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept of 5. So in other words, this crosses the y-axis at 5. So what I'm going to assume then is that point there is 5. And it has a gradient of 2. That means that for every one unit across, you would expect to rise two units. So the line is going to look something like this. Coming through that point there, a bit like that. Okay? We're asked to find out the coordinates of where each graph crosses the x and y axis, okay? So we've got this one here, it's the coordinate 0,5. But we need this point down here, and that point is when y is equal to 0 on this graph of y equals 2x plus 5. So when y equals 0, okay, let's just put this over here, that when y equals 0, you'd have 2x plus 5 would equal 0. If you subtract 5 from both sides, you're going to have 2x equals negative 5. And if we now divide by 2, you'd therefore have x equals minus 5 over 2. So this particular coordinate here, where the straight line crosses the x-axis, where y is equal to 0, will be the coordinates minus 5 over 2, comma, zero. Hope you can just see that in there. Okay, so that brings us then to the end of part A. Now, in part B, we're asked to find the points of intersection of the line and the curve. And clearly those points of intersection are there and there. And when you want to find out where two graphs intersect, then you need to do simultaneous equations because you're looking for a value of x and y that works for both your equations, both your curves in other words. Okay, so we'll just move this up, okay, a little for the moment. And we'll just say that at the point of intersection, 
Alright. Okay, we've got that done. At the point of intersection, we know that the y values would be exactly the same. So in other words, 2x plus 5 would equal 3 over x. So we have 2x plus 5 equals 3 over x. Now we have a fractional equation because we've got an x down here. And in all fractional equations, always get rid of the fraction. So multiply both sides by this x. So multiplying both sides by x gives 2x times another x, in other words 2x squared. Don't forget you've got another term here, that needs to be multiplied by x, so that's 5x. And when you multiply 3 over x by x, the x's would cancel, just leaving you with 3. We have a quadratic equation, because it's got an x squared here. It's a quadratic equation in x, so we need to rearrange this so it equals 0. So we would have 2x squared plus 5x, and we would now subtract 3 from both sides, so we'd have minus 3 equals 0. We need to factorise this. We could use the formula, but the question doesn't make any reference to answers in thirds or decimals, so there's a strong suggestion that this would factorise. And if we do factorise it, you'll find that it'll be two brackets with a 2x and an x, okay, and would have a minus 1 and a plus 3. Multiply this out and you would get 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. So we now have two factors being multiplied together to equal 0, and that would mean that any one of these two factors must be 0. So 2x minus 1 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. If we work on this equation, just simply add 1 to both sides, and we end up with 2x equals 1. And divide both sides by 2 gives x equals a half. This equation, very simple, just simply subtract 3 from both sides and you have got x equals minus 3. So we have the two x values of our coordinates where the uh, curves intersect. What we now need to do is just go on and find the corresponding y coordinates. So what I can do is pick the easiest of these two equations, it doesn't matter which one really, but uh, I kind of prefer the look of this one, a bit simpler, okay? So all I've got to say now is that when, okay, let's just draw a line across there a bit, when x equals a half, okay, we can see that y would equal 3 divided by the x value, a half, and half fits into 3 six times, so we have y equals 6. And when x equals the minus 3 over here, we see that y would equal 3 divided by minus 3. Alright, 3 divided by x. And 3 divided by minus 3 is minus 1. So therefore, the points of intersection Okay. okay, we'll just leave it like that. Points of intersection, always write them in pairs, are going to be a half, comma 6, and the other point will be minus 3, minus 1, minus 3, minus 1. And a quick glance at the graph should show you that they look quite reasonable. Half 6, half across 6 units up, is higher than that 5. And minus 3, minus 1, 3 units across, 1 unit down. It's not drawn to scale, but good chance that that's right. OK, and that brings us now to the end of this question, question number 6.